This is Body Trust, the leading edge of the wellness revolution. I'm your host, Dr. Doug, author of Chinese Medicine for the Modern World. Welcome to my classroom. Today I want to talk about how fat cells and eating keep us calm. And they do. Well, fat cells, of course, are food storage containers, as we covered last week, to help us get through long, cold winters when there's no food out there. You might as well stay in your cave or your hut and sleep and rest. So how exactly do fat cells keep us calm? I'm going to explain it in terms of Western medical science, emergency medical science, as well as Chinese medical science. Fat cells. Fat cells secrete estrogen. The specific form of estrogen is called estriol. Now estrogen does a number of wonderful things for our minds. Number one, it secretes or it helps the body secrete serotonin, a powerful nerve calming agent. Calm your nerves when you're sleeping through a winter. Second, it helps the body to secrete endorphins. Endorphins are our body's own form of morphine like substance that makes us happy. Yay! And calm. Third, estrogen dilates blood vessels in the brain. So it relieves that heat, that nervous heat that accumulates in the brain that's good for daytime activities, but not good for sleeping or hibernating. So it cools the brain. So what that means is that when you are carrying enlarged fat cells around, you are calm 24-7. And you see someone who is obese, or if you are obese, just realize this is how people are coping with modern life, with the worrying and the hurrying that are part of and are expected of modern living. In Chinese theory, we would say that Fat cells are material, which is yin. That excess yin calms the rising yang, that excess yang that's the result of worrying and hurrying in modern life. So that keeps us calm all day and night. Now, eating food all by itself helps us be calm. Here's how that happens. When you eat food, your body releases dopamine in your brain. Dopamine is that yeah, feel-good chemical that is also released in the same part of the brain when you drink alcohol, when you smoke cannabis, when you shoot up heroin, you take cocaine or when someone tells you I love you dopamine makes us dopey that's not how it got its name but that's what's going on when we eat food so for example they talk about a sugar high the sugar high is dopamine it's not nutrition rushing into cells that need those that need nutrition I mean most sugar does not absorb immediately in the stomach anyway it takes hours to process it's the dopamine yes it makes us feel good after eating during eating and of course in Chinese theory we would say that that yin food pushes down the yang and gives us that yin feeling. Yes, yin. We like yin. We like yang too. 
we want a balance, of course, between yin and yang. So this is why people get fat and why people eat. Uh, there are a number of other theories out there about why people are carrying, why modern people are carrying excess body fat. I want to talk about them right now because they're all pretty much bogus. There's, of course, the most popular idea is that you're eating the wrong food. Well, you're eating beans and rice, you're eating cheese, you're eating meat, you're eating this, you're eating that, you're eating fatty food, you're eating carbs, carbs. No, I don't eat carburetors, but I do eat starchy foods and sweet foods sometimes. Well, is there ever a food that pulls out a gun and forces itself into your mouth? If you're eating the wrong food, why are you eating the wrong food? If your body doesn't want to get fat, and it doesn't, not really, why are you overloading it with calories? See, keep asking why. Don't be satisfied with these superficial answers. These superficial answers help food corporations sell food. They help diet book authors sell books. They help nutritionists sell sessions. They're not real. I can eat anything I want. I can eat anything my body wants, and it wants fatty foods sometimes, and it wants starchy foods, and I won't get fat. Why is that? It's because I stop when my body tells me to stop, because I don't like the feeling of being full, and I don't like how taste goes down, the deliciousness goes down when my body says, it. Eh, you're putting on weight. Stop. I don't like those feelings. So I stop. It doesn't matter what I eat. That's why I say, with body trust, forget dieting. It's gone. It's out the window. You don't need to worry about what to eat or eating politically correct food all the time. You know what happens when we eat politically correct food all the time? At a certain point, we eat politically incorrect food. Because that's human nature, right? You can't be good all the time. At a certain point, you got to be bad. That's the yo-yo dieting, and people are sick of it. This is an alternative. This is a natural alternative, body trust. Then there's a the theory that, well, the, the food is depleted of nutrients, and so we're always overeating in order to get enough nutrients. This is absurd. If we were nutritionally deficient in uh, advanced industrial countries, we would see diseases of, uh, of <clears throat> countries that are uh, underdeveloped poor countries, poor classes of people, and all in times past. We would see epidemics of pellagra, and scurvy, and beriberi, and kwashiorkor, night blindness. I mean, these are nutritionally de deficient diseases that do affect people in the world, but not people living in countries and societies where there's lots of cheap calories. We don't see that. We don't even see it showing up in blood tests. There's no area of the country that's, that's seriously deficient in vitamin B. The only vitamin that seems to be deficient in modern cultures is vitamin D. You know where you get vitamin D? From the sunshine. People aren't going outdoors. They're glued to their screens. So you want vitamin D? You don't need to take vitamin D supplements. Go outside for a while. Get a little sun. That's the natural answer. Then there's chemical additives. I hear people, well, you get fat because of chemical additives in the food. How, how does that happen? First of all, fat cells are food. They're not, chemi they're not chemicals. Fats, enlarged fat cells are not piles of chemicals, piles of food. How exactly do chemical additives make us eat more than our bodies want? It just doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't hold up. I mean, I'm not in favor of chemical additives, but they're not the big bugaboo. They're not the boogeyman that some people make them out to be. Then there's the genes. Oh, 
He's genetically, uh, this has been debunked over and over again. I mean, this used to be very popular. Oh, he's genetically obese. Well, the obese gene, they're always looking for the obese gene. Listen, we are all capable of becoming obese. It's in our, it's in, that is in our genes, all of us. We're also capable of being lean. Everyone is capable of being lean. This goes back 300,000 years. This hasn't changed. The genes don't change that much. 10,000 years. And then there's the very popular, well, lack of exercise. Well, exercise is good. Exercise is healthy. But exercise to lose weight is a complete waste of time and energy. I never exercise to burn calories. I used to. What a waste of time and energy. You know, lack of it. The more exercise you perform, the more your body calls for food. And if you don't exercise, then your body's calling for no food, or very little. And of course, it all, had, it all depends on how much body weight you carry in the first place. We talked about that last week, about, about hunger. We're going to talk a lot about hunger as, as we proceed. So, that is the purpose of enlarged fat cells and eating and why people get fat. Welcome to Wellness in the News. I'm your reporter, Dr. Doug. I ran across an interesting item in Science Daily the other day thought I'd share it with you. The headline reads, MDs do not listen. This is a study put out by the famous Mayo Clinic and the University of Florida at Gainesville. Here's how it goes. On average, patients get about 11 seconds to explain the reasons for their visit before they are interrupted by their doctors. That's right, 11 seconds. Only one in three doctors provide their patients with adequate opportunity to describe their situations. The pressure to rush consultations affects specialists more than primary care doctors. 11 seconds. So, what's going on here? Well, emergency medicine, sometimes called Western medicine, emergency medicine is for emergencies. Emergency medicine is, hero is heroic medicine, saves lives, limbs, organs, tissues, uh, psychotic minds. It's heroic medicine and it is partnered with holistic medicine. It will be part of the wellness revolution. But emergency medicine is for emergencies. How about that? Holistic medicine is for everything else. So when you come to me or any of my holistic practitioner colleagues, you get a half hour to an hour with me because I have to find out everything about you in order to heal the whole person. If you've got something that's been around for a long time, Chances are every part of you, mind and body, is affected. And your social situation is probably uh, one of the leading causes of whatever you have. So all of that has to be addressed. All of it has to be connected. And of course, that's what Chinese medicine is so supremely good at. So moving on, here's another interesting study. A peaceful mind fights cancer. Here's a, here's a study in uh, Science Daily. Uh, a study titled Modulation of Anti-Tumor Immunity by the Brain's Reward System was published in the Science Journal Nature, in which scientists found a deep connection between a patient's mental state and cancer survival. Chinese medicine, of course, explains it once again. When you are peaceful, they call it happy, I call it peaceful. 
your muscles relax. They're no longer in a continued and chronic state of emergency, flight or flight, which is true for so many people, especially uh, precancerous and cancerous uh, cancer survivors. When those muscles relax, then the immune system can get where it needs to go and as fast as it needs to get there. In order to kill tumors, they need them, because that's what it does with tumors. It kills them and eat them if they're not too big. So, and of course, they don't even get started if your body is whistle clean inside. That's why we say we want to get lean and clean. Lean on the outside, clean on the inside. And lean mentally, and clean mentally. Here's an item. The more you smoke, the greater your risk of heart rhythm disorder called fibrillation. You know, the heart goes da-da, 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 or some people say, love Doug, love Doug, love Doug. But when that rhythm gets disturbed, it's going, well, obviously it can't pump the blood anywhere and tissues begin to die, including the brain and the heart and organs. Not good, right? One thing that sets that off is too much heat from cigarette smoke or cannabis smoke, any kind of smoke. If you're doing it on a regular basis and you're getting bronchitis or someone you know is getting bronchitis as a regular brain basis, itis of course means inflammation. If that's a chronic thing, it could happen. It could set that heart off, in which case you need an emergency team to shock that little cell, that one little cell in the heart that, cre that keeps the rhythm, to shock it back into its normal pattern. So beware about any kind of smoke. It's not good. My last item tonight is about acupuncture and dentistry. Did you know there was a study, of course, by um, some scientific team that noticed that acupuncture calms people when they are sitting there waiting for the dentist. <gasps> Yikes! To sit there waiting for the dentist. Not fun, is it? Well, it really calms people down. In fact, ear acupuncture will calm you down and make dentistry so much easier. I'll tell you something else. I have had um, acupuncture analgesia for drillings where all I did I went to the mirror I said don't put that Novocaine in yet I went to the mirror and I put in two needles here and two needles here tooth extraction one and tooth extraction two good name and you know what I came back and she said are you sure because this is gonna hurt I, said, I don't think it's gonna hurt anyway we can try it and you know what I didn't feel any pain there was no numbness I felt her hand, I felt her tools, I felt all that, da, 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 da. drilling it out, cleaning it out, filling it up, uh, but there was no pain. And afterwards, I didn't have the sore jaw or numb jaw, this big fat numb jaw from the Nokia. I've done that on, on several occasions and it really works. Really. So there you go, acupuncture and dentistry. Every dentist office should have an acupuncturist, a licensed acupuncturist on staff. Yeah. Well, someday the wellness revolution will bring acupuncture to dental clinics as well as a lot of other places. Well, that's the news. It's fit to yell about. Stay tuned for the interview. Welcome to the interview portion of my show. This is Dr. Doug. Go to my website at www.drkine.com. That's D-R-K-I-H-N as in naughty, dot com. And go to the page that says Chinese Medicine. Scroll down and you will find four videos. The first one is in, on yin and yang. The second is on Eight Principles, Part 1. 
Your homework for next week is to watch both videos on Yin and Yang and Eight Principles Part 1 so that you'll be ready for Body Trust Episode Number 3 next week. And remember, trust your body. The only infallible expert you have on healthy living. Hey everybody, don't forget to subscribe to my show and while you're at it, click on that little bell so that you'll receive notification every time I post a new episode.